Biomechanics is a study of the effect various forces have on the function and structure of biological organisms, specifically the human body in this report. Biomechanics study is common in sporting where athletes hire biomechanic professionals to study the movement and forces involved in their sport. These analyses are used to correct techniques to avoid injury or improve performance. The purpose of this assessment is to be make biomechanical analysis of the motor skill techniques involved in my tennis forehand and use it to suggest ways to advance myself in this area of the game. The tennis forehand is a crucial part of tennis which must be learnt to play the sport as it's the most frequently used stroke of the game. In this task, I will be gathering various videos of my tennis forehand and evaluating how the biomechanical principles and skills are applied. The forehand will be criticized and compared with an elite tennis player and the corrections made to improve the stroke. A motor skill is a physical execution of an activity involving voluntary muscular movement. The ability of the movement is improved by practice and application of the practice into the activity being the tennis forehand. The categories include discrete, continuous, serial, fine, gross, open, closed, locomotor, and non-locomotor. Motor skills are an extremely important in tennis forehand as this is the most commonly used stroke. A discrete skill is one with a distinct beginning and end. A discrete skill in tennis is serving the tennis ball. When a motor skill has no distinct beginning or end, it is said to be continuous. In tennis, moving around the court in a is a continuous motor skill, as a professional must constantly be doing it in a game. Serial skills bring together several discrete tasks to form a continuous performance and include a number of distinctly ordered elements. This skill is found when running onto the ball to hit a forehand as it combines multiple discrete skills. Fine motor skills involve the movement of small muscle groups, which is found in tennis when gripping the racket. Gross motor skills involve movements of large parts of the body or of the whole body. Performing a forehand stroke is classified as a gross motor skill as it requires twisting of the abdomen, pull back, swing, follow through of the arms and stepping. A closed motor skill is performed at a highly predictable environment where the player has full control of the timing of movements, can initiate action when they're ready, don't have to consider environmental changes such as the position of the opponent. A closed motor skill performed in tennis by masters is practicing the forehand against the ball machine on a consistent setting. An open skill is performed in an unpredictable environment where the object or context is changing, defenders or flight of ball. The performer must respond and movements must be adapted. An open skill in tennis is strategically hitting a backhand shot during a rally as the professional must take, make the decision to place a ball in the area opposite the opponent. Locomotor skills allow you to travel from one point to another which are displayed in tennis when running, sliding, and jumping on the court. Non-locomotor skills include manipulative skills, which in tennis are swinging the racket and twisting when opening the body in a forehand shot. A professional like Roger Federer masters all motor skills, allowing him to perform consistently, time his movements correctly, adapt to the environment and opponent's skill, react quickly, time his movements correctly, discover weaknesses of the opponent and play a strategic match. I believe I'm lacking ability and perfection in all motor skills due to my little experience. To improve them, I will learn the correct techniques and practice them by applying them in matches. Skill acquisition is a science that underpins movement, learning and execution and is more commonly termed motor learning and control. The three main stages of the process learning motor skills are the cognitive, associative and autonomous stage. The cognitive stage consists of learning and understanding the fundamental skills. The learner will make cognitive picture of the skill and try replicating it when performing and will often make incorrect and inconsistent movements during this stage. In tennis, the cognitive stage is the first learning the forehand, backhand and serves, which will improve multiple areas in the sub involve multiple errors in the subroutines in affecting accuracy, direction and speed of the ball. Entering the associative stage, the learner has an understanding of the fundamentals and mechanics required to complete the skill correctly 
and has achieved more consistency and fewer errors when they recognize and adjust. They must practice to become familiar with the sequencing of the subroutines and the timing. This can simplify as practicing stage, which is found in tennis after the player has learnt the basic subroutine of the forehand, backhand and serve strokes when they practice this skill in predictable environment until they perfect it. Once they have achieved perfection in the skill, they move to the autonomous stage where the skill becomes habitual or natural. The player can respond and perform the subroutines without thinking and with infrequent skill errors. Instead, he or she can give more selective attention to higher order cognitive acti activities such as game strategies or external cues. This stage is apparent in tennis after the player has learnt the basic subroutine for the forehand and backhand stroke when they now practice strategic plays, example hitting a ball away from the component. The Stage a player is at is heavily dependent on experience, which I have very little of. Therefore, I am currently near the middle stage of cognitive in my tennis forehand. The indicator of this is that I understand the subroutine, preparation, backswing, swing, and contact and follow through. And I achieve sound amount of consistency, but still have slight errors in my shots occasionally. To achieve a higher level in cognitive stage, I must practice a subroutine for the forehand without them with the ball constantly until the errors are significantly decreased. When performing a skill, there's a lot of crucial information the body retrieves and processes to make appropriate decisions and responses to ensure that the skill is executed correctly. Skill learning depends on the accurate relay of the senses to the brain and then to the muscles. When learning the forehand shot, there were multiple mental processes involved. Some included, what direction is the ball coming from? What direction do I run in and at what speed? When do I start the forehand subroutine? And how hard should the ball be struck? To answer these questions, information is retrieved from the external environment through the senses, smell, taste, hearing, touch, and sight. In tennis, this information can tell the player information like the flight path of the ball, which answers a multitude of the mental processes. In tennis and match, there's no time to thoroughly make decisions and respond, but there's a sequence of processing stages before the skill is chosen and performed, including anticipation, if this happens, do that, categorization, initial rehearsal of incoming input, reviewing past performance, storage, information retrieval, Professionals have mastered the processing stages through years of practice and experience resulting in them making controlled movements and accurate and purposeful responses. I believe that I haven't developed the stages of processing information quickly as I strike the ball at incorrect time at incorrect rotation of the racket, unlike Roger Federer who consistently makes the correct decisions. This can only be improved by more practice of my forehand and experience in tennis. Force can be defined as a pushing, pulling, or hitting, throwing action which is applied to an object to start movement, stop movement, or cause changes in movement. In order to create any movement or acceleration, force must be applied. The amount of acceleration an object, is an object has is dependent on the mass of the object and the net force acting on it. This introduces Isaac Newton's second law, formally stated as the acceleration of an object as produced by a net force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the net force. In the same direction as the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. When performing the forehand shot, force must be exerted to pull back the racket and swing in circular motion to apply hitting force on the ball. The amount of force made by the racket is equivalent to the amount the ball collects during collision. Linear momentum is the product of mass and velocity and implies a quantity of motion in a straight line. And angular motion refers to momentum refers to the rotational component of the stroke and takes into account both the moment of inertia about an axis and the angular velocity about the axis. Both linear momentum and angular momentum are crucial when performing a successful forehand. A collision occurs between two objects. The total momentum of them after the collision is the same as the momentum before. When the racket object 1 and the ball object 2 collide during a forehand, 
and an object loses momentum to the other, which in this case, the ball gains the momentum lost from the racket. Therefore, the total amount of momentum created and pullback hit follow through of the racket, and the incoming ball is constant. As you can see in the video of my forehand shot, my racket lacks acceleration before the collision and nearly comes to a stopping point. Then the acceleration of the swing increases significantly for the hit and follow through. This causes the racket and ball to have a less momentum and speed than what it would if the racket's acceleration was constantly increasing during the pullback hit and follow through, which is what I must do to improve. A perfect representation of this is shown in the video of Roger Federer's forehand shot. Broadly, a collision is when two objects strike each other, causing an exchange of force and momentum. Collisions occur in every sport, specifically tennis between the racket and ball during a forehand shot. The speed with which the ball leaves the racket is determined by the elasticity, mass and speed of the ball and the racket, accuracy of the ball to the centre of percussion or sweet spot, and finally, the effective mass of the bo player's body or body segments. When the ball collides with the surface, it becomes compressed and then due to its elasticity, expands back into its original shape and rebounds. When the ball and racket collide in a forehand, the two elastic forces act on each other, strings and the racket on the ball, causing the ball to propel off the racket. This is called an elastic collision. Due to both the ball and racket not being perfect, perfectly elastic, energy is lost during the compression and expansion of the collision. The speed of the swing and mass of the tennis racket affect the speed of which the ball has when propelling after the elastic collision. A larger mass and high, higher swing speed increases the ball speed. Professional tennis players like Roger Federer choose to increase their swing speed instead of the racket mass as it can become uncomfortable and affect technique and accuracy. A tennis player performing a forehand can hit the ball much harder if the arm and shoulder is braced, is braced before impact. The braced arm and shoulder plus the racket constitute a more effective striking mess than if they were relaxed. The center of percussion is the ideal collision point on the racket that achieves perfect speed, accuracy, and overall a smoother, smoother and controlled hit. It is located at the center of the strings on a tennis racket. Professional tennis players consistently hit the center of percussion, whereas I rarely do. I know this as the ball rebounds astray at non-linear speed and there is an intense vibration on the handle. To improve this, I'll position my racket and body correctly whilst practicing against the ball machine till my swing and timing is perfect. Inertia refers to the degree of difficulty in getting a stationary object to move or a moving object to stop. The heavier the object, the more difficult it is to move or stop when it's moving. A tennis ball is of little mass, therefore has little inertia, causing its motion, direction and speed to be changed easily from being stationary. Newton's law of inertia states that an object will continue at rest or in motion in a straight line unless acted on by an applied force. According to this law, after the collision in a tennis forehand, the ball will continue in the same direction once it's been hit. In a forehand shot, to increase force, the rotational inertia of the racket must be increased. Since the motion of the racket is rotational on a forehand, its mass and distance of the mass from the axis of rotation must be considered when calculating the rotational inertia. The equation for this is inertia equals mass times radius of rotation squared. Players must increase rotational inertia and inertial speed to increase force in the forehand stroke. Both of these components increase the speed of the torso and arms, causing acceleration of the racket to be higher in wind-up stage. Therefore, the force applied when hitting the ball will also be higher. Professionals gain maximum rotational inertia by designing their forehands hub routines so their radius, rotation and speed is, of the swing is perfect. 
To further improve my forehand, I'll discover what technique and swing path is ideal for me and perfect it through practice. Maintaining balance in a tennis match is a crucial factor involved in performing a perfectly smooth and controlled forehand shot. Center of weight is self-explanatory and is important to know if it for a player's body so it's balanced and can be secured. The center of weight is dependent on the base support, which is where your legs are planted. The base support changes based on the force's direction and pivot point of the body, the body rotates on. The height of the center of the weight also determines the security of the balance. The lower the center of weight results in the more security of the balance as the distance the weight line must move before reaching the limit of the base is greater. The lower the center of weight causes the body to be less secure for opposing reasons. When hitting a forehand shot in preparation, the knees must be bent in a slight squat with the body horizontal to the baseline before changing into an open stance right before contact. Roger Federer does this to have a secure balance. I lack the ability to maintain balance as shown in my video of my forehand by me resorting and taking an extra step after the hit to recover my balance. To improve this, I'll correct my stance to meet the requirements above. A projectile is an object propelled into the air or water by an external force. The flight path of a projectile is determined by its angle, speed, and height of release. In the case of a tennis forehand, the projectile is the ball and the external force is hitting of the racket, gravity, and air resistance. Air accuracy in a tennis forehand is the ability to make the shot so the ball gets close to the plant and, and destination of the opponent's side. The angle of release when hitting a forehand is important to know how long the ball will stay in the air and how far it will move horizontally. To perform a decent forehand stroke, the vertical and horizontal force must be equal to the angle projection of 45 degrees. The accuracy is also dependent on where the ball landed on your court, the timing of the hit, how fast and hard it's hit, where it hits the racket, where it hit the court, and the swing pathway of the racket. Height accuracy can be achieved by hitting the racket at the middle of the swing arc. This is how Roger Federer gets consistent accuracy in his shots, as shown by this image. As you can see in the image of me, the racket makes contact with the ball near the top of the swing arc. This causes the ball to be projected high in the air and a point to the opponent as it went out. To improve this, I will practice hitting the ball in the bottom to middle region of the swing arc and swinging later. At the beginning of this term, I had never played tennis before, meaning I had to start from scratch in every skill. The stroke that was focused on was the forehand, which I can confidently say I improved on. One of the specific components I improved on was the swing arc, which at the beginning had a very harsh curve, which I flattened out towards the end, it making my shot smoother. I also improved on my timing and the point of the swing arc of which the ball makes contact with the racket. I changed it from being at the top to the bottom dash middle of the arc, which made my shots lower and in the court. In conclusion, it's obvious I'm not naturally a good tennis player, but with the same amount of time, dedication, and practice as Roger Federer, one day I could be as good as him. My forehand shot now is still lacking consistency, unlike professional Roger Federer, who naturally hits a perfect shot without thinking of the forehand subroutine. The table displays the comparisons of Roger Federer and my forehand stroke.